Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime with Liz and... Oh, We hope you're very well. Are you well today, Chuckles? I'm very well. I'm very, very, very well. You're very well. What have we got on today, Mum? Okay, today we've got a compilation of videos. A compilation of videos? Yeah. Oh, when's the first one start? How about now? No, no, yeah! yeah. Let's go! Today we're going to be reading this amazing book. And this book is called The Gruffalo. And it's by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. But first, let's head over to the blurb to find out what the book is about. Come on! A mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark woods. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Walk further into the deep, dark wood and discover what happens when the quick-thinking mouse comes face to face with an owl, a snake, and a hungry gruffalo. Shall we go and read this wonderful story? Come on then. The Gruffalo. A mouse took a stroll through the deep, dark woods. A fox saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have lunch in my underground house. <laughs> it's terribly kind of you, fox, but no. I'm going to have lunch with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo, why, didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Here by these rocks and his favourite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? I'm off, fox said. Oh no! Goodbye little mouse. And away he sped. Silly old fox, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a Gruffalo. <laughs> On went the mouse through the deep dark woods. An owl saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come and have tea in my treetop house. <laughs> uh, it's frightfully nice of you, owl, but no. I'm going to have tea with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo? Why, didn't you know? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Where are you meeting him? Here, by the stream. And his favourite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To it to oh, no. Goodbye, little mouse. And away Owl flew. Silly old Owl, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a Gruffalo. <laughs> On went the mouse through the deep dark woods. A snake saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come for a feast in my log pile house. <laughs> it's wonderfully good of you, Snake, but no. I'm having a feast with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo, why, didn't you know? His eyes are orange. His tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Where are you meeting him? Here, by the snake. And his favourite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake? It's oh, time no. I hid. Goodbye, little mouse. And away snake slid. 
Silly old snake, doesn't he know? There's no such thing as a Gruffalo. <laughs> oh! But who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. Oh no! His <clears throat> eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Oh, help! Oh, no! It's a Gruffalo! My favourite food, the Gruffalo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good, said the mouse. Don't call me good. I'm the scariest creature in this wood. Just walk behind me. And soon you'll see, everyone is afraid of me. <laughs> All right, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You go ahead and I'll follow after. <laughs> he walked and walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hiss in the leaves ahead. It's Snake, said the mouse. Why, Snake, hello! Snake took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, crumbs, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he slid to his log pile house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hoot in the trees ahead. said the mouse. Why, Owl, hello. Owl took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh dear, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he flew to his treetop house. You see, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. They walked some more till the Gruffalo said, I can hear feet on the path ahead. It's Fox, said the mouse. Why, Fox, hello. Fox took one look at the Gruffalo. Oh, help, he said. Goodbye, little mouse. And off he ran to his underground house. Well, Gruffalo, said the mouse. You see, everyone is afraid of me. But now my tummy is beginning to rumble. My favourite food is Gruffalo Crumble. Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said, and quick as the wind, he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep dark woods. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. <laughs> the end. I love that story, boys and girls. I do enjoy that. Oh, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> it was awesome. I think I really do love it. Well, without further ado, shall we move on to the next one? Oh, definitely. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. Today, we're going to be reading this amazing book. And this book is called Night Monkey, Day Monkey. And it's by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Lucy Richards. But first... Let's head over to the blurb to find out what the book is about. Come on. Night Monkey and Day Monkey's worlds are as different as night and day. What one fears, the other loves. But in learning about each other's opposite worlds, they also learn to be the best of friends. Shall we go and read this beautiful story? Come on then. Night Monkey, Day Monkey. The moon shone down on the jungle. Night Monkey climbed up the tree. She clambered and leapt to where Day Monkey slept and whispered, You 
can't catch me. Day Monkey woke up and chased her, but lost his grip on the bark. He landed cross on a bed of moss, complaining it's much too dark. Look, said Day Monkey, hundreds of eyes, winking and blinking bright. Night Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft, they're fireflies that flash in the night. Help, said Day Monkey, flying mice, or maybe I'm wrong and they're rats. Night Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft, haven't you heard of bats? Stop, said Day Monkey, listen to that. They saw in the tree into logs. Night Monkey laughed and said, Don't be daft. It's only a chorus of frogs. Hey, said Day Monkey, there's a banana. How does it manage to fly? Night Monkey laughed and said, Don't be daft. That banana's the moon in the sky. <gasps> <sighs> Day Monkey yawned and rubbed his eyes. Maybe I'm dreaming, he said. Night time is creepy and I'm feeling sleepy. I'm going back to bed. <sighs> the sun shone down the next morning. Day Monkey slid down the tree. He slithered and leapt where Night Monkey slept and whispered, Night Monkey woke up and chased him, screwing her eyes up tight. She came to rest in an empty nest, complaining it's much too bright. Look, said Night Monkey, moths wearing makeup. Why are they in disguise? Day Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft, they're beautiful butterflies. said Night Monkey. Look at those giants swinging about in the trees. Day Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft. Those giants are chimpanzees. <laughs> Stop, said Night Monkey. Screeching owls, the colour of peas and carrots. Day Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft. Haven't you heard of parrots? said Night Monkey. Naughty black monkeys. Can't they keep out of our way? Day Monkey laughed and said, don't be daft. Our shadows are here to stay. <gasps> Night Monkey yawned and rubbed her eyes. Oh, maybe I'm dreaming, she said. Daytime is crazy and I'm feeling lazy. I'm going back to bed. <sighs> now, Night Monkey sleeps in the daylight and Day Monkey sleeps in the night. But now and again at sunrise, when it isn't quite dark or light, they share a bunch of bananas halfway up a tree. Day Monkey calls it breakfast, Night Monkey calls it tea. The end. Well, did you enjoy that, boys and girls? I bet they did. I enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it too. Shall we move on to the next one? Oh, definitely. Next one. Here we go. <laughs> Today, we're going to be reading this amazing book. And this book is called The Snail and the Whale. And it's by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. But first, let's head over to the blurb to find out what the book is about. Come on. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffed and sighed. The sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. Shall we go and read this lovely story? 
Come on then. The snail and the whale. This is a tail of a tiny snail and a great big grey blue humpback whale. This is a rock as black as soot and this is the snail with an itchy foot. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffed and sighed. The sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. These are the other snails in the flock who all stuck tight to the smooth black rock and said to the snail with the itchy foot, be quiet, don't wiggle, sit still, stay put. But the tiny sea snail sighed and sniffed, then cried, I've got it, I'll hitch a lift. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail that looped and curled and said, lift wanted around the world. This is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright. A humpback whale, immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tail of the humpback whale. He held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, come sail with me. This is the sea so wild and free that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far off lands. With fiery mountains and golden sands. These are the waves that arched and crashed, that foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed. The tiny snail on the tail of the whale. These are the caves beneath the waves, with stripy fish with feathery fins and shark with hideous toothy grins. Swam round the whale and a snail on his tail. This is the sky, so vast and high, sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm. With zigzag lightning, flashing and frightening, the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. And she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves and the caves and the golden sands. She gazed and gazed, amazed by it all. And she said to the whale, I feel so small. But then came the day the whale lost his way. These are the speedboats running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place, upsetting the whale with a ear splittering roar, making him swim too close to the shore. This is the tide slipping away. And this is the whale lying beached in the bay. Quick, off the sand, back to sea, cried the snail. I can't move on land, I'm too big, moaned the whale. The snail felt helpless and terribly small. Then, I got it, she cried and started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. This is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. This is the teacher holding her chalk, telling the class, sit straight, don't talk. This is the board as black as soot, 
and this is the snail with the itchy foot. A snail! A snail! The teacher turns pale. Look! say the children. It's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail. A silvery trail saying, save the whale. These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool, squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming into the bay, and these are the villagers shouting hooray as the whale and the snail travel safely away. Back to the dock and the flock on the rock, who said, how time's flown, and haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told a wonderful tale of shimmering ice and coral caves, and shooting stars and enormous waves, and of how the snail, so small and frail, with a looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale. Then the humpback whale held out his tail and on crawled snail after snail after snail. And they sang to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of the grey-blue humpback whale. The end. Oh, I love that story, boys and girls. I do enjoy that. Oh, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> awesome. I think I really do Well, without further ado, should we move on to the next one? Oh, definitely. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. Today, we're going to be reading this amazing book. And this book is called Zog. And it's by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. But first, let's head over to the blurb to find out what the book is about. Come on. Zog is the keenest dragon in school. He's also the most accident prone, flying into trees and even setting his own wing on fire. Will he ever win a golden star? Shall we go and find out? Come on then. Zog. Madam Dragon ran a school many moons ago. She taught young dragons all the things that dragons need to know. Zog, the biggest dragon, was the keenest one by far. He tried his hardest every day to win a golden star. All the dragons in year one were learning how to fly. Hi, said Madam Dragon, way up in the sky. Now that you've been shown, you can practice on your own and you'll all be expert flyers by the time you're fully grown. Zog went off to practice, flying fast and free. He soared and swooped and looped the loop, then crashed into a tree. <gasps> Just then, the girl came by. Oh, please don't cry, she said. Perhaps you'd like a nice sticky plaster for your head. What a good idea, said Zog. Then up and off he flew, his plaster gleaming pinkly as he zigzagged through the blue. A year went by, and in year two, the dragons learned to roar. Mm. More, said Madam Dragon, louder I implore. Now that you've been shown, you can practice on your own, and you'll all be champion roarers by the time you're fully grown. Zog went off to practice. He roared with fearsome force. He kept it up for hours on end, but then his throat grew hoarse. Mm. Just then, the girl came by again. She said, what rotten luck. Perhaps you'd like a nice soothing peppermint to suck. What a good idea, said Sog. Then up and off he flew, and breathing fumes of peppermint as he zigzagged through the blue. 
A year went by, and in year three, the dragons learned to blow. No, said Madam Dragon, breathe out fire, not snow. Now that you've been shown, you can practice on your own, and you'll all be breathing bonfires by the time you're fully grown. Zog went off to practice. He blew with all his might. He whirled around in triumph, and his wingtip caught a light. Ouch! Just then, the girl came by again. She said, oh, you poor old thing. Perhaps you'd like a nice stretchy bandage for your wing. What a good idea, said Zog. Then up and off he flew, his bandage flapping wildly as he zigzagged through the blue. All the year four dragons were learning, can you guess? Yes, said Madam Dragon, how to capture a princess. Now that you've been shown, you can practice on your own. You'll need to capture hundreds by the time you're fully grown. Zog went off to practice. He tried and tried and tried, but he simply couldn't manage. I'm no good at this, he cried. I'll never win a golden star. Just then, he saw the girl. Perhaps, she said, you'd like to capture me. I'm Princess Pearl. What a good idea, said Zog. Then up and off he flew, the princess gripping tightly as they zigzagged through the blue. Ah, said Madam Dragon, our first princess so far. Congratulations, Zog, my dear. You won a golden star. Zog was proud and happy, and Pearl felt good as well. She took the dragon's temperatures and nursed them when they fell. A year went by, and in year five, the dragons learned to fight. Right, said Madam Dragon, here comes a real live knight. Up spoke the knight. My name, he said, is Gadabout the Great. I've come to rescue Princess Pearl. I hope I'm not too late. Zog breathed fire and beat his wings. You can't, she's mine, he roared. Oh no, she's not, yelled Gadabout and waved his trusty sword. The other dragons crowded round and watched them all agog. Who was going to win the fight, Sir Gadabout or Zog? Then Princess Pearl stepped forward, crying, Stop, you silly chumps! The world's already far too full of cuts and burns and bumps. Don't rescue me. I won't go back to being a princess and prancing around the palace in a silly frilly dress. I want to be a doctor and travel here and there listening to people's chests and giving them my care. Me too, exclaimed the knight and took his helmet off his head. I'd rather wear a nice twisty stethoscope, he said. Perhaps, princess, you'll train me up. And Pearl replied, of course, but I don't see how the two of us could fit upon your horse. Then Zog said, flying doctors, I'd love to join the crew. If you'll let me be your ambulance, then I can carry you. Bravo, said Madam Dragon, an excellent career. And all the year five dragons gave a loud resounding cheer. <coughs> then Madam Dragon told the horse, I really hope you'll stay. I'll let you be my pupil's pet and feed you lots of hay. <coughs> What a good idea, said Zog. Then up and off he flew, the flying doctors waving as they zigzagged through the blue. The end. Well, did you enjoy that, boys and girls? I bet they did. I enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it too. Shall we move on to the next one? Oh, definitely. Next one. Here we go. <laughs> Today we're going to be reading this amazing book and this book is called The Gruffalo's Child 
and it's by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler. But first, let's head over to the blurb to find out what the book is about. Come on. The Gruffalo said that no Gruffalo should ever set foot in the deep dark woods. But one wild and windy night, the Gruffalo's child ignores her father's warning and tiptoes out into the snow. After all, the big bad mouse doesn't really exist. Does he? Shall we go and find out? Come on then. The Gruffalo's Child. The Gruffalo said that no Gruffalo should ever step foot in the deep dark woods. Why not? Why not? Because if you do, the big bad mouse will be after you. I met him once, said the Gruffalo. I met him a long, long time ago. What does he look like? Tell us, Dad. Is he terribly big and terribly bad? I can't quite remember, the Gruffalo said. Then he thought for a minute and scratched his head. The big bad mouse is terribly strong and his scaly tail is terribly long. His eyes are like pools of terrible fire and his terrible whiskers are tougher than wire. One snowy night, when the Gruffalo snored, the Gruffalo's child was feeling bored. The Gruffalo's child was feeling brave, so she tiptoed out of the Gruffalo cave. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. Into the woods went the Gruffalo's child. Aha! A ho! A trail in the snow! Whose is this trail and where does it go? A tail poked out of the log hill house. Could this be the tail of the big bad mouse? Out slid the creature. His eyes were small and he didn't have whiskers, no none at all. You're not the mouse. Not I, said the snake. He's down by the lake, eating gruffalo cake. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the gruffalo's child. Aha, oh ho, marks in the snow. Whose are these claw marks and where do they go? Two eyes gleamed out of a treetop house. Could these be the eyes of the big bad mouse? Down flew the creature. His tail was short and he didn't have whiskers of any sort. You're not the mouse. To woo, not I. But he's somewhere nearby eating gruffalo pie. The snow fell fast and the wind blew wild. I'm not scared, said the Gruffalo's child. Aha! A ho! A track in the snow! Whose is this track and where does it go? Whiskers! At last! And an underground house! Could this be the home of the big bad mouse? Out slunk the creature. His eyes weren't fiery. His tail wasn't scaly, his whiskers weren't wiry. You're not the mouse. Oh no, not me. He's under a tree drinking Gruffalo tea. It's all a trick, said the Gruffalo's child, as she sat on a stump where the snow lay piled. I don't believe in the big bad mouse. Here comes a little one out of his house. Not big, not bad, but a mouse at least. You'll taste good as a midnight feast. Wait, said the mouse. 
Before you eat, there's a friend of mine that you ought to meet. If you let me hop onto a hazel twig, I'll beckon my friend so bad and big. The Gruffalo's child unclenched her fist. <gasps> the big bad mouse, so he does exist. The mouse hopped into the hazel tree. He beckoned and said, just wait and see. Out came the moon. It was bright and round. A terrible shadow fell on the ground. Who is this creature so big, bad and strong? His tail and whiskers are terribly long. His ears are enormous. And over his shoulder, he carries a net as big as a boulder. The big bad mouse, yelled the Gruffalo's child. The mouse looked down from the twig and smiled. Aha, aho, prints in the snow. Whose are these footprints? Where do they go? The footprints led to the Gruffalo cave, where the Gruffalo's child was a bit less brave. The Gruffalo's child was a bit less bored. And the Gruffalo snored and snored and snored. The end. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that, Chuckles? Oh, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. Oh, it was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. And we, that's all we've got time for today. Wait, what, what, what? No! Yeah. That's all we've got time for? Yeah. They're all over. You'll come back next time. Oh, there's going to be more? Of course. With me? Yeah. Chuckles? Yeah. All Chuckles are on you as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay, so so what can we do between now and then? Well, between now and then, you can stay tuned to find out how you can help. Oh, that sounds great! Bye bye, Bye! -bye. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed that book and you would like to purchase yourself a copy, the links will be in the descriptions below along with all my socials. And if you would like your book read on my show, that's where you'll find all the information to contact me. Thanks guys, bye. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and if you'd like to see more of my content, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks guys. <laughs>